So we all know that the petition to revoke Article 50 has over 6 million signatures now, and we all question the validity of it. But today I wanted to work out what it actually means for the country as a whole, and more importantly, where these different views are coming from. So I looked at the map on the petition itself, and you can see that areas like London, Cambridgeshire, Oxford West, Sheffield Hallam, uh, Scotland, it's quite uh, Edinburgh in particular, and parts of Glasgow as well, are where remaining in the EU is most popular on this petition. Whereas the North East, Yorkshire, Birmingham, uh, Manchester, parts of Manchester, and Cardiff are where this petition has been least popular. So then I had a look at the original Leave Remain map. In this map, Leave is the darker blue, Remain is the bright yellow, and anything in between the marginals are kind of this kind of murky, bluey, yellowy green. And you can actually see that it's pretty similar to the petition map. London, which was heavily for Remain, is heavily for revoking Article 50. Again, places like South Cambridgeshire, which had a Remain percentage of 61.51%, is very heavily in favour of revoking Article 50 by 18%. And on the opposite end of the scale, we've got places like uh, Dudley North, which leave by almost 70%. And if we go into Dudley, you can see they're in the bright yellow areas of this map. In other words, they have not the people in those areas have not signed the petition. So it seems to me like the people who support leaving still support leaving and the people who support remaining still support remaining. But I kind of wanted to prove my point and more importantly I wanted to see how MPs were voting on this subject. So I looked at the five most leave constituencies in the EU 2016 referendum. They were Boston and Skegness which had a leave percentage of 76%, and they only voted for 3% in this petition. And they had a Conservative hold back in 2017. Walsall North, again, 74%, only 2% on the petition, Conservative gain in 2017. Clacton, 73%, 3%, Conservative gain. That was a gain from UKIP, remember? South Basildon and East Thurrock, Again, 73% and 4% Conservative hold. Kingston upon Hill East, 73% and 3% Labour hold. This is our only Labour seat in our sample, but we'll see how it plays into um, the Leave vote. These are the five most Leave supporting constituencies. So what about the five most Remain supporting constituencies? Well, we have Hackney North and Stoke Newton which voted 80% in favour of remaining in the EU, and lo and behold, they voted 20% on the map. Streatham, they voted 79% in favour of remaining, and 20% on the map. And most of these are Labour, Bristol West, again. Islington North, 78%, 23%. Glasgow North, SNP, 78% to 19%. But then I wasn't happy. I was wondering about marginal seats. How do marginal seats who voted in the 2016 referendum feel about Brexit now? Are they more in favour of revoking Article 50 or are they less in favour of revoking Article 50? Now, it's kind of hard to decipher from the petition, but I chose the petition rather than a poll or anything, partly because you could decipher where the opinions came from. So, Blackley and Broughton voted 50.04% in favour of leaving, so marginal seat, and 5% of their constituents voted in favour of revoking Article 50 in this position. It was a Labour hold back in 2017. Wallasey, similar. Combe Valley, again, similar kind of margin. Salisbury, the highest percentage we have on our list, but still... Hard to interpret because, at the end of the day, even the most Remain constituencies only go to 20%. So, it's difficult to decipher out of 
20, what 10% mean? Does it mean that half the constituents now want to remain? Or does it mean that more than half have bothered to go online, log in, sign this petition? Or has it been hacked? Has it been tampered with? Is this unreliable data? Loughborough. Again, they voted marginally for leave, 8% for this petition. Conservative hold in 2017. So these are the five leave constituencies, the five most leave constituencies MPs, and what they voted for in the indicative votes. You can see that amongst the Conservatives, after the second meaningful vote on the deal, they voted for the withdrawal agreement that Theresa May negotiated. But failing that, two of them are in favour of the Malt House Compromise, which was a managed no-deal scenario. In other words, to the Conservative leavers, no deal isn't so bad. But MPs on Labour and other parties who represent Leave constituencies have pretty much all said no to a no deal. And that's where all these other options have come up, such as a common market and a customs union and even a second referendum. It's those options that complicate the process a little bit. As for the Remain constituencies, who you might recognise some of these faces, they're really in favour of a second referendum of saying absolutely not to leaving without a deal. Other things they're in favour of is obviously a customs union and common market too. The SNP are more in favour of revoking. Labour obviously want to have their kind of customs union labour style deal, but they'd be more than happy with also having a second referendum as it's in the Labour manifesto. What's interesting about the sample of highest leave constituencies versus highest remain constituencies is it really seems to be Tory, even though we got TIG and S&P here, but leftist, leftist politics versus right-wing politics. Whereas the marginals are pretty much even splits and most of the options down at the bottom seem to be pretty much every option that was available in the indicative votes, including weirdly a Labour MP, Graeme Stringer, voting for the Malthouse Compromise. The withdrawal agreement is really popular amongst Leave representing MPs, but hated amongst Remain representing MPs. That might be because the, the Remain sample I chose was mostly Labour, but like I say, I was choosing the most Remain supporting constituencies. It's pretty much even splits amongst the marginals, and so it gets a total of six. As for a second referendum, Love by Remain representing MPs, hated by Leaves representing MPs except one, which is Labour, and even splits again amongst the marginals, saying absolutely not to leaving without a deal, similar set of results as the second referendum, approving a customs union, pretty much even splits amongst all three, the fully leavers, the fully remainers, and the marginal constituencies. Common market two, uh, loved a bit more by remainers, because, mainly because I chose a labor sample. Loved by leavers, hated by remainers, even splits amongst the marginals once again. So it's all these seats in the south, which are the marginal leave seats, which really are deciding Brexit right now. And you can see that, you know, there's there are the round about 10% in this area of constituents who support outright revoking Article 50, which is quite high considering that the highest um, constituencies on this map get about 20%. So it's about half, half of their constituents support revoking Article 50. So where do I think this is going? Well, when you consider that most of the Leave voting constituencies in the north, but also, as you can see, are, well, um, there's a few conservative there, but you can see in the little side panel here that they're Labour, and Labour are trying to vote for a second referendum and for a customs union, which might mean not being able to make trade deals with nations outside the EU, then I see it seriously damaging the Labour Party, especially, especially if they give up workers' rights or 
end up betraying Brexit, not just in a kind of, we're not really leaving the EU sense, but in a kind of, we're going to approve something that leads to less social equality, which the Labour Party are all about. Whereas amongst the Tory seats in the South, I think it really depends what kind of Brexit we get, whether we get a harder Brexit or not. I think if we do get a harder Brexit, it really depends how how the public see it. If it becomes like an a drive to austerity, then the Conservatives could lose out at the next election because of those Remainers who will be turning towards parties that voted against Brexit. But if it turns out to be a drive towards prosperity then those conservative seats are more than safe in the south we could end up with another tory government having said that both parties are being damaged incomprehensibly by brexit so it could be that both parties are damaged and we end up with a hung parliament again but thanks for watching guys join in the debate below and subscribe